Ah yes, the versatile crosscut sled. I made this one years back and it has served me well. However, it's time to go out with the old and in with the new. In this updated version, there is T-Track throughout for even stop block storage and a double stop block system to make dados without a dado blade. And another one of its awesome features is it has an auxiliary fence that is installed in a matter of seconds. This gives you the ability to cross cut pieces up to five feet in length with accurate repeatability. Versatility and adaptability is what I had in mind when building this, and that's why I'm calling this the ultimate DIY crosscut sled. Well, if you want to see how it all comes together, stick around. Let's get building. Hey guys, before we get started, I want to give a massive shout out to this week's video sponsor. New Air has been gracious enough to send us this wonderful mobile AC unit, and it has been an absolute game changer for us here in the state of Florida. It gets to be about 105 to 110 degrees in this shop, and now I can come out here in comfort and do what I love to do, and it has a pretty cool trick up its sleeve too. If you live up north and it happens to be in the winter, it's a heater as well. So no matter where you are and no matter what space you're in, this thing will keep you comfortable. Guys, if you've been wanting to pull the trigger on something like this, there's a coupon code down below in the description to save 20% on this very unit. New Air, thank you so much. And guys, let's get into this project. I also want to thank Rockler for sending the 17-piece Universal T-Track kit to make this build possible as well. If you've been a fan of the channel, you're going to recognize this material. My workbench and my cabinets are both made of this. We're going to use marine grade teak and holly plywood along with some Baltic birch that's also a half inch in thickness. Three of these pieces are going to be layered together to give me the front and back fences of the new crosscut sled. I batch them up, I make some marks, and I go ahead and cut them to size on the old sled. I wonder if it knows it's being replaced. And now it's time to glue these up. We're going to spread some glue out evenly on each of these pieces of Baltic birch. We're going to layer them thusly as you see here, putting a piece of paper down to protect my work surface and clamp it home. And there we are. We wait a few hours, let that glue set up, unclamp them, and now it's time to take them to the joiner. As accurate as I thought I had glued everything up, those three pieces of wood did not join together 100% perfectly, so the jointer is helping me true up one edge. I take that edge up against the table saw fence, and I rip these to the final width. Now it's time to take the back fence of the table saw sled and attach it to the workbench with some CA glue and some blue tape. I've got my router set up with a makeshift fence. As you see, it's going to rest up against that and ride along, creating that dado that's going to accept that T-track and disaster stroke. Look at that. It ruined the piece. Let me bring you in here and explain what happened and what I'm going to do. I cannot believe that happened. Okay, the mistake was on my part. It was a complete failure on my part. All right, so the fence you saw that I had set up to ride the router against was completely clamped in by some squeeze clamps to test it out. I had put a bar clamp at one end and I had failed to put the bar clamp at the other end. So on the last pass, on the, on the trailing pass, the fence moved and it ruined my workpiece. Now it's not a huge deal. I could just simply rip three more pieces out, attach them, redo the process and never show you. But I don't think there's much value in that. The fact is, is that like in life, woodworking, you're gonna fail. It's just, it's just a matter of fact. It's a matter of time until it happens. And this really wasn't a huge deal. However, I wanted to leave the mistake in the video to show you not only there is a method of putting a dado down a piece with a router that will work with the T-Track and all that. However, I'm gonna redo this piece by layering plywood layers together and not using the router. So essentially giving you two options to create the same task. Okay, so I failed. I'm leaving it in the video. I thought there was some value in it. I hope you learned from it just as I did that it's okay to fail. You just gotta get up again. That's it, it's that simple. All right, let's get back to it. All right, now enough rambling, I get it. Let's get back to work. Okay, so we're gonna take two pieces of Baltic birch that are three and a half inches in width, another piece that's one and a quarter inches in width, and we're gonna attach those with glue and brads. We're gonna then lay the T-Track right next to it and then put another piece of wood right next to that, creating, yes, you guessed it, the groove we were trying to make earlier with the router. Using a self-centering drill bit and some three quarter inch screws, we're gonna attach the T-Track in place. All right, once installed, it's time to trim it to its final size. Make a few cross cuts here, and I'm gonna go ahead and rip the excess off on the table saw just like this. And so at this point, I'm gonna take another piece of Baltic birch and I'm gonna put it perpendicular to the grain of the wood. This is gonna be attached with just screws to the table saw sled, and I think this gives the screws a little more meat to grab onto. With the back fence complete, it's now time to attach the front fence to the base of the table saw sled. I clamp it up and make some reference holes that I'm gonna then transfer over to the drill press. I'm gonna take a three quarters of an inch portion of it and I'm gonna make some recesses about one eighth of an inch down. All this is gonna become clear in just a second. I'm then gonna go ahead and drill some holes out that are about three eighths of an inch in width. 
as you can see there I'm gonna mix up some five minute epoxy and I'm gonna go ahead and put these threaded inserts in those recesses in four spots on the fence all right, so here are the machine screws that are going to be used to attach the table saw sled to that front fence. I'm going to go ahead and drill some 3 8 inch holes out, and then I'm going to countersink those holes with a half inch drill bit, being careful not to go all the way through. And as luck would have it, my half inch drill bit did not quite make a hole big enough to receive the half inch tapered head of these screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and blue tape some of the threads up, chuck them in a drill and run it over a belt sander. You can just run this over a regular sandpaper if you don't have a belt sander, it's not a problem. And I took just enough material away to go ahead and fit down into those holes. And it looks like it's a nice flush, clean fit. Now at this point, it's time to marry the two pieces together. You probably guessed why I'm using threaded inserts and machine screws to attach this front fence. If you haven't guessed it yet, I'll explain it a little bit later in the video, but everything lined up really well and everything's a nice snug fit and I'm happy with it. Now it's time to make the runners that are gonna rest underneath the table saw sled that are gonna guide itself through the grooves on either side of the blade. I have some made up already, however, I'm gonna make some more out of that marine grade plywood. I'm being very careful not to go over on this. I want these things to be very snug inside that groove. And then once they are, I'm gonna trim it down to final height, which is gonna rest just below the surface of the table saw. With the runners trimmed to size, it's time to install them. I'm using some paint sticks to raise them up a little bit into the grooves, putting a few dabs of CA glue on. I've got my fence set up and I'm making sure that the base of the sled is exactly in line with the base of the table saw. I wait a little bit, fingers crossed, everything is stuck together, and success. CA glue at this point is just a temporary bond, so I'm gonna take a countersink bit and attach them permanently with some three quarters of an inch countersunk screws and then trim off the excess. All right, well, let's give it a test. Fits in the grooves nicely, glides very nicely, and has no give whatsoever. All right, now it's time to install the back fence. Before we do that, we're gonna take a chamfer bit on the router and we're gonna chamfer a 45 degree angle on the base of the actual fence itself, giving a small little area for sawdust to collect as we're making cuts. That way, accuracy is not compromised. Now I break all the edges with some 220 grit sandpaper and it's time to get that back fence installed. I simply line it up parallel to the back of the sled, clamp it in place, take an apple box to kind of make things easier on me. I lay it on top of that upside down and I'm going to attach this fence temporarily with two screws, one on either end. We're gonna take the sled back to the table saw. We're gonna raise the blade up and we're gonna make our first initial cut at 90 degrees. All right, with the cut being made, it's time to check for square. I'm using one of these large L-shaped 90 degree squares to do this. I reference one edge back up on my fence and the other up against the cut line. And as you can see here, it looks pretty good up until the very end and you can see there's a slight imperfection there. So I'm gonna unscrew that screw on one side of the fence. I'm gonna make minor adjustments. I'm gonna clamp it back together and then screw it back on with it being dead set 90 degrees. Now, I'm going to link a video down below to Nick Ferry's crosscut sled. This guy explains the five cut method that will get you perfectly square cuts better than I can. So check his video out down below. The initial coat of paste wax on the bottom of the sled is definitely something that's needed to keep this thing flowing nice and easy. As you can see here, I'm making a test cut one more time just to show you how accurate I was able to get it with this method of only using a square to square it up. But seriously, go check out Nick's video, it's awesome. So this is a pretty cool moment. I'm using the sled to make something for the sled at this point. I'm simply making a small box that's gonna be attached to the back of the sled to protect the user from the blade that gets exposed while making cross cuts. Let me get this exotic Ingram out of the way. If you get that reference, shoot me an email. Maybe sometime we can run the knife all. Anyway, we're gonna trim it up. We're gonna make it nice and flush. Use some CA glue and activator to attach it to the back, clamp it in place, and then finish it with some glue and screws. Now, this is the fun part when you start to make the accessories for the sled. This is simply a very simple stop block, pretty rudimentary, taking a piece of Baltic birch and I'm making a mark right in the middle of where the T-track is. I take that mark and I make a corresponding line I'm gonna drill a hole right there at 3 8 of an inch to accept that T-bolt, which is then gonna be attached with a star knob. And it looks like it's a little too tight at this point, so I'm gonna trim it down just by about a 16th of an inch. Put it back in place. Worked so well, I decided to make two. 
<laughs> so why two stop blocks? Well, here's a quick example. If you want to make dados in a piece, you can simply set one stop block up on one end, one on the other of the line, make repeated passes going from one stop block to the other along the table saw blade, and then you got yourself perfect dados every time. All right, guys, well, it's a new morning, and it's time to finish up this crosscut sled build. Last night, I was playing with it a little bit, and I got a lot of functionality out of it, and I'm really happy with how it is so far. However, there's one thing that I'm limited to, and that's the actual size of it. I didn't make a really big one for that matter. So what I need to do is I need to make some type of an auxiliary fence with a stop block again that can attach to this in case I need to make really long repeatable cuts. Let's say I was building a maybe a waist high fence. I needed to cut pieces two and a half, three feet long over and over and over again. I'm gonna build something now that I could easily attach to this using this T-track that will allow that process to take place. So let's get that done. Now this is going to be very reminiscent of how we made the first fence, except this one's going to be five feet in length, much longer than the first one. I decided to go with the latter method of building that dado by layering pieces of wood together. And after installing this T-track, again with some countersunk screws, I'm going to go ahead and fill in this gap with, I thought it was going to be T-track, but I decided not to, it's really not necessary. Just another piece of wood would suffice. Once it's all trimmed to size, I run it through the table saw blade one more time to flush it up, test it out, make a few marks to where I need to drill some holes. Taking a quick measurement of the middle of the T-track and I'm going to go ahead and make five holes that are going to be evenly spaced, giving me some flexibility on how long I can make this auxiliary fence. After a little bit of cleanup, it's time to make the stop blocks that are going to be used for the auxiliary fence. I got a piece of that triple layer Baltic birch. I'm gonna rest it up against the blade, bring the stop block to it, and then when I turn it perpendicular to that, I'm able to make perfect squares, as you can see here. Now for a quick test fit. We're gonna test this auxiliary fence up against the original fence. And as I'm tightening it down, I can move it back and forth, side to side. Looks like it's working pretty well. And now it's time to make these stop blocks for it process is the same as before making these stop blocks and luckily there's multiple sizes of t-bolt in the kit that you get from Rockler again I'm gonna link down below everything I use from them in this video and as you can see here the process is the same and I left a little bit of a groove there or a gap that way I can install these stop blocks on either side of the fence all right the build is just about complete we're gonna test it out one more time putting everything back together it looks like I have the capacity to cut repeatable cuts up to five or five and a half feet in length. And quite frankly, for a crosscut sled, that's pretty awesome. I'm really happy with how this turned out. So to keep those stop blocks close at hand, I've installed this last piece of T-Track I had at the far side of the far fence. And this is gonna give me a nice area to kind of keep these stop blocks stored nice and tight. So it's at this point, I still need a storage solution for the long auxiliary fence, and I figured an eye bolt in the side and a screw in the wall is as good a place as any. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this whole thing with a coat of paste wax over the entire sled, but let me explain something real quick first. Okay guys, before we finish this whole thing up, I wanna show you one key feature of this build. It is the removable forward fence. Every once in a while, you're gonna encounter a piece that is gonna be a little bit longer than the actual depth of your sled. So you wanna be able to remove that just in case you have that kind of work piece. I have a panel cutting jig for that matter, but however, if you want a sled that's gonna be a one-stop shop for your shop, this is kind of the way to go. So let me show you how this works. Real simply, you just turn the sled upside down, remove those four screws, and now you're in business. Now you can accommodate pieces that are a bit longer than your sled, and when you're done using it, simply put it back. Now, I'm not gonna use this feature very often, but it is nice to know that it's there. At this point, as we're wrapping things up, I want to thank New Air again for sponsoring this video. The mobile air conditioning unit has absolutely changed the frequency in which I'm going to come out in this shop in the summertime. It has revolutionized what we do out here. Thank you again, New Air. Guys, if you want one for yourself, there is a coupon code and a link down below where you can get one. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here all the way to the end. We definitely appreciate the viewership. And of course, we always invite you to subscribe to the channel. There's going to be a few more videos over there as well. And again, thank you so much for watching. We will see you on that next episode of A Glimpse Inside. And guess what? Hey, don't all the cool kids wear things on their heads? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ready? Let's go. Ooh -ha! Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us all the way to the end. We got scared.
Anyway. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs>